Hey guys, so what you're about to see is my experience with COVID. Um, obviously, it is a deadly disease or a deadly virus. Um, and if you think you have symptoms, go seek medical um, attention from an expert. I am not an expert. I am not a medical professional. I am just giving you the information that I have received from my medical experts, from the doctors and the nurses and the people that did the testing. Um, I am giving you that. So this is not in any way um, giving you medical advice. It's just telling you what my experience has been and what I have gleaned from that. So without any further ado, let's get on with the video. Hey guys, my name is Jeff and I am the Homestead Dad. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my experience with COVID. Um, this is not going to be a video about wearing masks or not or anything like that. It's just going to be what my experience was with COVID, what my symptoms were, how long it lasted, and my experience with testing. So both my oldest son and I were exposed at the same time um, on October 29th, and we were made aware on, I think, October 31st, on Halloween, that, um, that we were exposed to someone who was COVID positive. And the person that we had, um, had been around on the 29th started so showing symptoms on the 30th, had a fever, did not feel well, got tested and was positive. Um, and then, or had the rapid test and was presumed positive because of his symptoms. The long, the PCR test ended up coming back positive as well. So Saturday, the 31st, Jacob and I, um, went and got tested. We both were just kind of feeling slightly achy. Um, you know, not a lot of symptoms, but we wanted to kind of know if we had COVID. So we went and we got our swab and we didn't get the rapid test. We just got the PCR test. And, um, then we started waiting. Um, that evening, that night, uh, both Jacob and I, uh, had a fever and chills and that kind of just lasted over the night. And the next day we started having aches, like our whole body ached. Um, so because of that, we kind of like, I slept on the couch, Jacob slept in his bedroom where he's able to kind of just keep to himself anyway. <clears throat> so I kind of tried to stay to myself as well. That whole day Sunday, I spent the day out here in the barn. Um, I just kind of sat on this chair here, watched the TV and tried to keep, you know, to myself. I just felt off. I felt achy. Um, you know, didn't feel super terrible, but you know, just didn't feel right. Um, and that's kind of how my symptoms remained for the next, I would say three to five days. I just felt achy. Um, like all day I felt achy and obviously that Monday, my wife, um, had to go to work. So I had not yet, you know, gotten a positive test. Um, so she, and I actually, I think she actually worked from home anyway. Uh, I was in the house and anytime I was near the kids, I was wearing a mask, um, as was Jacob. And we just try to keep our distance as much as possible. Um, I asked my next two oldest kids to, you know, kind of help out the little ones, uh, including homeschooling and stuff like that, so that we could just keep our distance. And so for the next few days, that's what we tried to do. We just try to keep our distance, keep mask on so that we would limit exposure as much as possible. We just felt achy. Um, and our test came back, I think it was four days later and both Jacob and I tested negative. So we're like, well, maybe we just had something else. Maybe we had the flu or a different virus or, you know, whatever. Jacob got better a lot faster than I did. His achiness only lasted a few days. Mine lasted, I don't know, I would say almost a week. Like I was still aching um, the following weekend. Like not a lot, not to the point where I couldn't do things, but to the point where it was just like, I, I didn't feel right. You know, I could, it was, and the only way I could ex explain it is like my bones ached. Like I could just feel an aching in my bones. Um, and I, like I said, I just didn't feel right. By that time, the next weekend, Jacob was back to hundred percent feeling fine. Um, so Monday rolls around, uh, a week, 
was that nine, eight days later, um, nine days later, the following Monday. And um, I woke up in the morning and I felt, I think it was Sunday actually, woke up in the morning and I felt fine. I felt good. I was like, hey, the aching's gone. This is great. You know, I'm done with my symptoms. <clears throat> that afternoon, um, it felt like I got hit by a truck. It was like two or three in the afternoon and it was just like total exhaustion just overwhelmed me. Like I couldn't do anything. I had to lay down and just couldn't function the rest of the day. Next morning, I woke up and I felt fine. I was like, awesome. You know, maybe that was it yesterday. I'm done. Same thing. The next day, and in fact, it was worse the second day than it was the first day. That exhaustion, I like had to lay down on the couch and I'm trying to homeschool my son and like, I couldn't get up. I just like, it was, it was too much to lift my head almost. So my wife and I decided, Hey, why don't I go get another test just because this is weird. And you know, let's get another test. So we have that piece of information. So I went and got the test. The problem was I didn't get my test back for another, I think it was another four days. So by that point, um, the next day I was already feeling fine. Um, I didn't have the exhaustion the next day. So we're waiting for my test results, but I felt fine. And based on the recommendations at the time, I was actually already out of quarantine. So my test result really didn't matter that much, except that we wanted to know what was going on. So I got my test result back and sure enough, I was positive. Jacob did not get another test, but since he and I both had the exact same exposure, and the same onset of symptoms and the same symptoms, more or less, um, we just assume that he had it as well. We may at some point get him an antibody test. I've heard that our local grocery store offers the antibody test for like $25. So we will probably get him the antibody test just to make sure. So, um, like I said, I got my result back, but I was already feeling fine. And the recommendation at the time was um, two weeks of self-quarantining from your exposure to a positive person or 10 days from your onset of symptoms. It both ended up being about the same time, which was the 10th, which is when I got the test. And, you know, then I was fine after that. So, and it was also, I think the recommendation is as long as you hadn't had a fever for 48 hours and your symptoms were getting better, you could then be out of quarantine, which I was fine and didn't have a fever. So funny part was, my uh, primary care doc got my result back and he's like, Hey, you have to do X, Y, and Z he left a message. And I, so I called him back and I was like, actually this, you know, this is what happened. This is when the symptoms had started. And you know, I no longer need to be in quarantine. <clears throat> he's like, cool. As long as you know. So, um, in the meantime, no, not nobody else had really gotten sick. It was just Jacob and I, um, I think, that I think actually like nine days after I gotten it, the, the first weekend, um, our baby who is like one and a half, uh, had a fever in the night, just, you know, it was hot, sweaty. Um, you know, you could tell didn't, didn't sleep well, didn't feel well. The next day slept the entire day, which is totally not like a one and a half year old. Like he normally is all over the place. He literally just like, I put him on my stomach and he slept all day long. Um, but the next day was fine. So it really didn't matter to us. We weren't going to subject our one and a half year old to having a swab stuck up his nose because based on my positive test result, um, the rest of the family had to quarantine, um, for 14 days as of my last day of symptoms. <clears throat> In the meantime, my wife had gotten symptoms and um, she went and got tested. So what we think happened with me, let me let me take a step back for a second. What we think happened with me and Jacob and our first negative test was that we had gotten tested too early. The recommendation, as far as I know right now, is to wait five days past your um, encounter, your you know um, with a positive a person with positive COVID test or three days after your symptoms. Well, we got tested three days after our exposure and really um, like 
we were on the first day of our symptoms. So we were probably two days too early. And I think that makes a big deal. I think people need to know that more because if you go out there and you get a test on your first day of symptoms or a day or two after you're exposed to someone with COVID, the likelihood is that you will get a negative test. And the reason that this could be a problem is, is you might be a, you know, a, one of those people who doesn't get any symptoms and you think you're negative and you go about your life and you could, you know, expose a bunch of other people because you think you had a negative test. So people really need to know, you need to wait five days past your exposure to someone or three days after your symptoms start in order to get tests. So afterwards, my wife started not feeling well. She kind of just felt exhausted. Um, I don't know that she had the fever per se, but she got tested <clears throat> because for work, she needed to have, you know, she needed to know whether or not she should go in or not. Test came back negative. Um, but we just were like, this doesn't make any sense. She got tested again, still came back negative. So who knows? Like, and that's, so that's part of the hard thing for our family is you hear about how um, virulent this virus is, like how much it spreads. But to our family, the like, it seems like Jacob and I were the only ones who got it and possibly the baby. We won't know if we, unless we were to get an antibody test. But everybody else, I suppose they could have gotten it, but none of them showed any symptoms at all. So, yeah, that's our experience with it. You know, we both, Jacob and I were very lucky. We had very mild symptoms. Um, just the one night of fever and aches, or, you know, like fever, chills, um, and then aches. I had it longer than he did, which makes sense because based on everything they said, Older people get it, um, you know, more severely than younger people. He, he's 16. He seemed to bounce back in literally just a few days, whereas it took me like that 10 days to get back to totally normal. I did have one night where I woke up and I felt like I couldn't catch my breath. I just felt like I couldn't get enough air into my lungs. Um, but that lasted like five or 10 minutes <clears throat> and then I was fine. So if there's one thing that I would say is if you... Are exposed to someone wait five days don't go get a test right away and if you start having symptoms don't go in right away wait the three days because I think that's how people like I have a feeling that's how people are spreading it right now is because they go in early they get tested they get a negative test because they haven't developed the viral load and they think they're negative then but they just you know got tested too early so that's my experience like I said I know this is a very deadly virus um, we have a friend whose dad is in the hospital right now. Um, um, my in-laws have some friends who's, who are in the hospital right now. And other people that I know have gotten it and they have gotten symptoms far worse than we did. So we feel blessed that we, um, that we got it as mildly as we did. Um, it's one of those things where I kind of feel like, hey, great, I've gotten it. I'm done with it. Based on everything they're saying, I should be you know immune for at least five to seven months, if not years. Um, but obviously they need to do more studies on that. But at the same time, they don't know what the long-term effects are. So you kind of just have to wait for that. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I would be so happy to answer you on everything that we did. Um, you know, I had gotten tested in two different systems and, you know, both seemed to come back about four days. Now my wife had gotten a test and it took like six days for her first test to get back and then one day for her second test to come back. So I think right now it just depends on where you're at and how many tests are being um, processed and what their capacity is. So that's my story. Um, I'm thankful to be past it at this point. I'm thankful that it seems like the rest of uh, my family has not gotten it. They are all past their 14 day quarantine and you know we're just kind of trying to do the best we can moving through the rest of the the season so thank you guys god bless you and your families as he has so richly blessed ours and hopefully i will see you guys in the next video mm -hmm.